Hey, folks, before we get rocking and rolling here, do your boy a favor. Come join the rocket ship for good. Come join the mission for good. Don't click that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button and get subscribed to the Burnley Dump Show for all things content, for all things electricity. We're ready for you. Smash it and enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, however you got here, why ever you got here, I can assure you, this world has led you to the right place. Spending your fine Tuesday morning with us here on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. I'm Big Game Bob, coming to you early, coming to you often. We got a spectacular episode for you folks today. Sit back, relax, enjoy the program before we go dancing, ladies and gentlemen. Let me remind you that the Brilliantly Dumb Show is brought to you by the boys and girls over at Roback. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to this and you are a golfer, mark my words, it's a big Bob guarantee. I wear it all the time, day in, day out. I'm rocking the Q-Zip right now. Roback Golf Company is the company you want to strut out to the golf course rocking. These guys are phenomenal. They do things right. It's not just golf. They got Q-Zips. They got sweatshirts. They got polos. I said it in the last episode, people always preach, they say, sell things that are true to your heart that you truly enjoy. If you watch my Instagram, I wear it all the time. You could be a part of that Roback family. Go to Roback.com, promo code Bobby. Probably don't have to spell it out, but I will. B-O-B-B-Y for 15% off your first Roback golf purchase. If you've already purchased Roback, find the friend who has not purchased Roback. Get 15% off together. It's a big Bob guarantee. These fits are exceptional. For those of you watching on YouTube, I got the hat. I got the Q-zip. I'm feeling real good. Let's go dancing, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you what, folks, I I hate to start off the show this way, just completely bashing myself, um, but I am one of the few people that got suckered in to the Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather fight and paying pay-per-view for it. I absolutely hate myself. I really do. What an absolute, just horrific fight we saw Sunday night. And I should have known the fight was going to be bad because it was on a Sunday night. And nobody schedules a good fight for Sunday night. I got to ask my dad and ask his friends if they ever saw the Muhammad Ali fight on a Sunday night. Should have known, but I didn't. And I'll admit what I tried to do before anything is illegally stream the fight. I'll be blunt. I decided to go on to Google and guess how stupid this is. I put in the keyword search illegally stream Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather. And I clicked the first link that I saw, which was probably a direct link to the FBI or whoever monitors illegal streaming. A lot of times in life, ladies and gentlemen, if something seems too good to be true, it is. Typing in illegally stream Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather is probably not going to get you to the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. To get these things streamed, you got to dig deeper. You got to go to the Reddits of the world. You got to know a guy who knows a guy who knows a site. HTTP slash 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 fight for free dot dot L square underscore. Whole nine yards to get to the fight. Not going on Google, typing that in and clicking the first link. The link led me to a YouTube account from a 14-year-old kid named Yozuka278 or something like that a little Asian kid. And this little Asian kid promised us for a full hour that he was going to be streaming the fight until the fight was about to start. We just watched this kid play Warcraft while he promised us he would be streaming the fight soon. And I got suckered in into even that. I spent my whole night with Yozuka and it was horrific. I was eating my dinner. Yozuka was in the background playing Warcraft. I went, I went to purchase the fight. Even while I was putting in my credit card information, I just hated myself. I really did. And then once I got into the fight legally, I was so pissed about this $50 that I just spent. The first thing I see is a promo of Floyd Mayweather telling us how much money he has. 
which is what you're going to get out of Floyd Mayweather, whether it's a promo or not. He's in his closet showing us his $35,000 belt made out of alligator skin. And I'm sitting there looking at it, knowing $50 of that belt is mine. And I gave it right to Floyd Mayweather. Here you go, Floyd. As if you don't have enough of this, here's $50. While I snack on my shitty Quiznos sub. Yes, Quiznos is still around, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen. Although they're turning into Blockbuster. They're going to be extinct soon. Shitty, shitty sandwich. Horrific fight. Just a terrible fight. And what I did after the fight, I was so pissed off with myself for purchasing the fight that I listed down my top five worst purchases of the decade. I don't know exactly when I purchased these things, but I purchased them. I jotted them down and then I compared what purchase was worth. In no particular order, ladies and gentlemen, Big Game Bob's worst purchases besides the Floyd Mayweather-Logan Paul fight consist of this. Number one, a pogo stick. I was in Dick's Sporting Goods a couple years ago, and I decided that I was going to buy a pogo stick. Pogo sticks are kind of like Quiznos subs, close to extinct, but not quite yet. And I bought a pogo stick, $35. And I looked at this pogo stick, and the reason I bought the pogo stick was for content. I thought somehow, some way, I would get content out of this pogo stick. I called my dad. I said, Dad, I just bought a pogo stick. You know what he said? What are you, fucking Johnny Knoxville? Are you planning on filming Jackass 7? What, are you just going to go catapult yourself off the Brooklyn Bridge on a pogo stick, Robbie? Why the hell... Would you buy a pogo stick? And you know what, folks? I didn't have an answer. Never used the pogo stick. Probably never will. Yet, would I take it over the Floyd Mayweather fight? Maybe. Maybe. But definitely up there with one of the worst purchases. That's number one. Number two, a Hawaiian breeze candle that I bought from Ralph's supermarket the other day. Hold the phone. Let me go get this candle. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a, a Hawaiian breeze, a Hawaiian ocean breeze candle. The candle looks like a popsicle stick. It looks nice. Doesn't smell nice. Matter of fact, doesn't smell like anything. And the more I think about it, a breeze isn't necessarily a smell. And I went into Ralph's supermarket and I bought this candle because it looked good. Doesn't smell like shit. I actually wish it did smell like shit because then at least it would smell like something. But then I think about it. A breeze is more of a feel. And you can't feel a candle. You can only smell a candle. It's not cinnamon where you can physically package it up and turn it into a candle. You can't walk off the beach with packaged breeze and turn it into a candle. Yet I bought it. Probably was about $15. I spent $15 to smell air. This thing is horrific. Why I haven't thrown it out yet, I don't know. But at least I got a podcast bit out of it. The third item of Big Game Bob's top five worst purchases of the decade besides the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight was what had to be a, a 30 by 50 stainless steel safe. I was drunk coming home from the bars with my friend who was the DD at the time. Said he had to make a quick stop at Home Depot. And if there's anything that I know about Home Depot, it's that nothing about Home Depot was quick. It's never quick at Home Depot. Home Depot parking lots alone are some of the biggest parking lots out there. It's a seven minute walk from the parking lot into the sliding doors of the Home Depot. And they always got like eight different sliding doors. It's the biggest parking lot, but besides Ikea, they're always huge. And to make it even that much better, my friend had to stop for his dad to get cement there. If there's anything I know about cement as well, it's that nothing about cement is ever quick. 
Talk about just sobering you up. Nothing will sober you up faster than a trip to Home Depot. Or maybe the DMV. Try going to the DMV drunk. See how fast you can get sober. But I bought this monster safe. And I was belligerent drunk in the Home Depot. My friend was buying something. So I felt the need to buy something. And I remember waking up the next morning, having still just no idea how I got this safe inside um, or even why I would have a safe. I don't have a gun for the simple reason that if I get robbed, there's nothing to rob. Best a robber could walk out of my apartment with is a couple bucket hats, a carried coffee machine, and they used seven iron. If a robber robbed my house, the only thing I would have to do is possibly buy another bucket hat and just find a new way to drink coffee. I don't need a safe because I don't want to put my wallet in the safe. I don't want to have to enter a 10-digit code every time I go to leave my apartment to get my wallet. Don't want to put my passport in the safe. Because every time I go in the safe to get my passport, I'd be reminded about how obnoxiously big of a safe that I have. Just a horrific purchase. It had a 30-day refund guarantee that if I wanted to refund it, I could bring it back. The only thing that I could guarantee, though, is that I didn't have the time to haul in a 100-pound safe back to Home Depot for a refund. Just a horrific purchase from top to bottom. The fourth worst purchase of the decade for myself, besides the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight, was an omelet from Einstein Bagel Bros. I went to Einstein Bagels and bought an omelet. I didn't trust the bagels after looking at the bagels, so I ended up getting a Western omelet. But the more I thought about it after realizing how bad my omelet was, is if you can't trust Einstein's bagels, bagels, you definitely can't trust their omelet. The place is known for their bagels, and I'm getting a Western omelet. It was horrific. $11, I believe. Meanwhile, the Floyd Mayweather fight was 50 so not as bad, but still bad. It's like walking into a famous Chicago deep dish pizza joint and asking for thin crust. Just doesn't add up. It's like going to your local dive bar and ordering a bottle of water because you don't trust their beer. I don't know what I was doing. It was a horrendous omelet. The same way this was a horrific boxing match. Can you tell that I'm a little upset this morning? $50 right down the tube. My fifth worst purchase of the decade. Actually, maybe not going to be the decade. I take that back. Probably not the decade. But my fifth worst purchase, I think of all time, in no particular order, was a 1918 Red Sox shirt. Me taunting Red Sox fans in 2004 for not winning a championship since 1918. Me and my dad went to the Kurt Schilling Bloody Sox game. Yanks were up 3-2 in the series. I thought no way in hell the Yankees could possibly lose this game. And then the next one, they did. So I had that 1918 shirt for, I would say, two days till the Yankees got knocked out. Maybe they had a travel day, so maybe three to two days, probably. Just a horrific purchase. But ladies and gentlemen, where I'm going with this is don't ever buy a YouTube pay-per-view fight for a YouTuber. I do have a lot of respect for Logan Paul, Jake Paul, what these guys done. I mean, they've kind of made boxing relevant again. Who was really watching boxing in the past five years besides Teddy Atlas? You know what I mean? It's just not really out there. So I respect these guys for doing it. I respect this guy for getting into the ring with Floyd Mayweather. I just don't respect myself for spending $50 on it. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Brilliant Dumb Show, we are moving on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's bring in the young cat himself. Let's 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 go ahead and bring in the Jersey native. 
That is the young man from New Jersey staying in at five foot three, 160 pounds, I believe. Gerard Gilfone, are you with us? Gerard Gilfone, Jerry, Jerry Diesel. Come on now, one time with me, Jerry Don. Jerry, Jerry Diesel. Jerry, Jerry Diesel. Jerry, Jerry Diesel. He's old, da, 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 da. Hey, Jerry Don, ladies and gentlemen, he's got a large order of McDonald's French fries that he's on. Now, Don, I don't mind you eating the fries. I like fries. You like fries. Yep. Did you have to bring them on air? And, and and by the way, Don, I hear Mike Green and Mark Jackson talking in the background. Mm-hmm. Just turning that down a little bit for me. Yeah. Hey, can you mute that, please? Was that Miss Jerry that you asked to mute it? Yeah. Tell Miss Jerry so I lower. apologize. Don, would you do me a favor? Got it. Got it. Would you, would you tell Miss Jerry that I apologize? Bobby said he's sorry. Now, Don, let me ask you something. You got to do the podcast. You just say to Miss Jerry, hey, there's something that I got to do. There's something I got to take care of. Jerry, you're eating those fries out of the bottom right corner of your mouth. Don't you want to put <laughs> the French fry in the middle of your mouth, Don? I chew with that side. Is that the side you always chew on? You were absolutely favoring that left side of the of the lip there, Don. Is that how you eat your chicken nuggets, Jerry Don? Put a fry on them. Hold on. But did you put you wrap the French fry around the chicken nugget that is done? Yeah. Show the folks what you did again. Do you have another fry? There's always another couple fries in the McDonald's bag. There's no fry. You sure there's not a fry in the bag, Don? That's there's got to be. There always is. You're going to tell me you went into the bag that that was the only fry that you could find? Is that little fried corner there? Yeah, with the nugget. Don, if there's – you wrap it around like it's prosciutto around cheese, Diesel. That's a bizarre way to do it. And what do you got? You got the sweet and sour, Don? Sweet and sour and barbecue. You do go with a little sweet and sour, huh? Well, I feel like the sweet and sour is kind of like the French bulldog. You know what I mean, I, Bob? The, the sweet and sour sauce you're comparing to a French bulldog? Similar, if you think about it. In what regard? Oh, they could be sweet, but they could also be sour at the same time. You know what I mean? You know what, Jerry? i got to be honest with you. I never thought about that. Kind of like Dunkin' Donuts is iced tea. You do? You, now, Don, okay. Let's get into that, actually. You have been giving me the most bizarre phone calls, I, I think, of all time. Um, Why? The Jet, uh, our, our producer here, B. Shicker, Shicker Vids. Uh, we love you, Benny the Jet. Do me a favor. Play, I got a voicemail from Jerry Don this week. I also got a... A voicemail, I got an Instagram message. Let's play the, the, the messages that we have received from Jerry Don. Jerry, I'll let you keep eating your nuggets. Benny the Jet, fire it up. Bob, Juan Damien, Nebraska. Woke up this morning thinking about chicken nuggets all day. I wanted to eat them up all day. Uh, but then I seen a rocket. And then the rocket told me that Frank actually liked turtles, that he didn't like kangaroos. But anyway, uh, I think I'm going to play ping pong tonight, later. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play pool instead or something like that. Maybe not cocky. But uh, Stevie at work said we're not working overtime today. Who knows? Maybe I'll get to the Nuggets. Maybe I won't. But uh, maybe you should know that Dunkin' Donuts got a special uh, again with the uh, dollar iced teas. They're uh, any size for a dollar. Um, figured you should know. Anyway, uh, have a good day. I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, well, maybe I won't see you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, maybe maybe I won't. All right, later, Bob. Bye. Now, let me ask you something, Jerry Diesel, okay? Yeah. First off, you also called me to let me know that you now will be going by the name of Juan Damien Nebraska Gilfone. Correct. And... <laughs> and First, when you said that, I thought that that was going to be your son's name. Can you confirm that that will not be the name of your son, for the love of God? Yeah, definitely not my son's name, Bob. Okay, and is, was that even thought about in your son's name to name it Juan Damien, Nebraska? 
There could have been a thought, but uh, it went away. Um, but that is my new name. That is what I'm going to go by, and that is what I'm going to change my name to. So you are going to go from Gerard Guy Gilfone, as we know, Jersey Jera, to Juan Damian, Nebraska Gilfone. Don, first off, where did you get the name Juan Damian, and did you need to put the Damian? Did you met? Did you mean to put that as your middle name, and you're saying it without? <laughs> no. no, I just thought of it one day. I, you know, I was messing with a buddy at work. You know, and I was like, what if my name was Juan Damien? And then I said, I actually, actually kind of like that name, Juan Damien. I might even name my kid Juan Damien. And then I thought about it, and it's probably not a good name for a little boy. But I th- I like it for me, Juan Damien. Jared, do me a favor. First off, hmm. I hope you I hope you don't go with the Juan Damien. Don't name your kid Juan Damien. Please yeah, no, don't. that's not going to happen. Please don't start him out like that. But how that. cool is it to have two first names as your first name? Why not just have a first name as your first name, move it as the middle name? And what about Nebraska? You like that one? Nice so touch, Nebra- no? But, Don, you, you have no affiliation to Nebraska what's, whatsoever. You don't have a relative from there. You Nothing. Nope, nothing. Do you think Nebraska because it just flows well? Well, that's where Queen Latifah's at. Queen Latifah lives in Nebraska? She could. I, I guarantee you, Don, if we fact check that, Queen Latifah does not live in Nebraska whatsoever. Maybe. And could you tell me this? Who, who are you playing knock hockey with? Um, Pedro. From work, Pedro? No, he's next to me. Jesus Christ, Don. What the fuck you got going on? Hmm. You're out of control, Diesel. What do you mean? Well, I, I, what I mean is I, these voicemails to me are somewhat concerned. It, it makes zero sense at all, Don. How about the Brooklyn Nets getting – there you are seeing the, the, the Bucks right They're now. They're kicking the shit out of them. And you know what? Let let James Harden rest his hamstring. Yeah. Okay, they don't need him. They don't need him. They don't need him. You know what started on your decline lately, Don? First off, what? it's not been brought to the table – Mm-hmm. And I want to know, Jerry Don, is it something to be concerned with? Let's call a spade a spade, Gerard. Mm-hmm. Juan Damien. Let's yeah, call please. a spade a spade. <laughs> yeah. Jerry Don. Has Juan Damien, been, Jerry. Juan Damien, Nebraska, Gilfone Thank has you, been absolutely ice cold. You came on the Patreon yeah. for the Patreon folks and told them that the <clears throat> Portland Trailblazers were your sleeper to win it all. Yep. Okay, you've been giving me player prop bets that aren't coming remotely close to hit, and now you want to name your name your your name to be Juan Damian Nebraska. You send bizarre voicemails, and I love you, Don. But 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 what the hell is going on? Yeah, I just feel like listen. If Damian Lillard had another star on that team, they'd go really far. Respect. Listen, they, he played great. I mean, you want to talk about, did you see that game? I think it was game four. He went ballistic. He scored almost 60. He was hitting every shot, brought it to overtime. Two overtimes he went. He didn't get no help, this guy. And whatever, the coach is gone. He's fired. You seen that? Yeah, but 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 what I was saying to you, though, is this has been the case for years. Yeah, of course. I, I agree. I agree. That's why you might see Dame Lillard on the Knicks next year. I could see now, you know, it's amazing with these teams. It's like, I mean, look at the Knicks. They hit, look at the Nets, right? The Nets had that one good year with all those young guys, Spencer Dinwiddie, all those good guys. All yep. of a sudden, from one good year, everybody now wants to come over there. The Knicks now, with the way the garden was that night, with how rowdy the garden was, showing promise, Julius Randle, I agree. You might see some big time free agents start to make. Yeah. If I was Damian Lillard, I'd, I'd give myself a shot in New York. You're going to get paid, paid. You go there. You're going to get paid like crazy, but, but, but wouldn't he have to be traded? He's not going to be a free agent. Is he? No, I think, I think Portland gave him a deal, but if he gets traded, he can always get more money. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if if they'll reconstructure the contract, Yeah, I I would want to be, Anywhere but Portland. Yeah, like what is there to do there? I, you know, Don, I don't know, but I will say though, Joey Coldcuts actually told me this, and he told me to tell you this because this would be so perfect for you, Diesel. Mm-hmm. Is uh, 
Portland has a huge, huge strip club industry. Seriously. Yeah, they do. That's what they say. They're known for that, believe it or not. I didn't know that. I know there's a lot of trees and shit. There's a lot of trees in Portland. There's a lot of people taking drugs in Portland. It's it's a pretty I think, big I home. think actually crack cocaine is legal in Portland now. There's no way crack cocaine is legal in Portland, Jerry. Now, I think that actually might be true. You actually mean to tell me that if we have another fact check, you actually are going to make us take the time to look to see if crack cocaine is legal in Portland? Something is legal in Portland that, that shouldn't be legal. I th- and it's a narcotic, like a now, hard that's drug. A different, that's a different ballgame. I could see some type of wild card narcotic being legal in Portland. You know where the way I feel that with, too? Is what? Oregon. I feel like just about anything goes in Oregon. Nobody knows. Well, that, that, that's Portland, isn't it? I, that's a really bad look for me, Don. That is a really bad what? show. Because you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And that is I, I tell you. <laughs> talk about me being on a decline. What about you and Barney? I will tell you what, Don, that is a real bad luck. Yeah. I just feel like anybody outside of Oregon doesn't know what's going on with Oregon. Well, that's because they're drinking Dasani water. What's the Sani water have to do with it? Something's in the Sani water that shouldn't be in there. You should look I it up. I don't, you know, Don, I have had a bad batch of the Sani water, and I don't think you're wrong. Something's in it. Something's I, in the Sani water. I do not think you're wrong. I've had a bad batch of the Sani. Now, Jerry Diesel, well, give me your top three waters. I got mine. You got yours. What's your top three waters? If Okay, number one, obviously, Essentia water. That's Don, I was going to pick that number one. That's an awesome start, Diesel. The second one, I'd have to go with the Trader Joe's alkaline water. The spring water, that is? No, the big one. The big ones, the alkaline ones. You ever the, see the big ones? The big ones, Trader Joe's spring? Trader Joe's, I think it's alkaline. Got to try that. Haven't tried that. Very good. Joe's. They're expensive. Trader, and then Joe's, the- Trader Joe's does a good water. Trader Joe's does they a do. good water. Very good water. So we got Essentia, Trader Joe's, and third, I would go with Poland Spring. Poland Spring is absolutely sensational. And the problem is, Don, on the West Coast, Again. you can't get Poland Spring. Poland Spring is a great, great water. Paris Notice that. Very well with food. When I used to live in Arizona, I would Amazon it. You would Amazon the Poland Spring water. Do you yeah, like I did. Cold, Don. Ice cold. The I like it freezing cold. I never understood the room temperature water, guys. Kind of like the Sahara Desert. What do you mean by that, Don? That cold. Is the Sahara Desert cold? I think so. Wouldn't the Sahara Desert be warm since it's a desert? Well, you ever seen the Sahara Desert in Antarctica? Gotcha. Don, there isn't a Sahara Desert in Alaska. There could be. I am so lost, Jerry Don. I don't want to be lost, but I am. You Uh, you, you don't do a good job of keeping up with the flow. That's why. Keeping up with the flow? What flow, Jerry Don? The flow that I'm dishing out. About the Sahara Desert being in the Alaska? Jerry, if you tell me that the Sahara Desert is in Alaska, I'm going to take some time out to think to myself, is the Sahara Desert actually in Alaska? Might be. Could be. There could be a Sahara Desert in the Alaska, but I'll tell you what, probably isn't a desert. Maybe. Don, can you tell me about this chicken nugget? You said the McDonald's? Yes. So the, the nugget changed. I just, the, at the, I just at had the, a 10 piece. Tell the folks that the, the, you're saying the, the McDonald's chicken nugget has changed. Lighter breading, more thicker breading. Talk to me about definitely, this nugget. Definitely lighter. And the color got darker. And they got smaller, which is kind of weird. Smaller, lighter, darker. I'd like to actually call McDonald's and see what they did to their nuggets because now I'm a little now I'm a little upset. I would be I would be very curious to hear from McDonald's. I really do. What I don't understand is McDonald's in a way has has perfected the chicken nugget. Jerry Don is calling McDonald's right now. For the folks on the show, they're probably going to put him on. Do you hear Bob or no? Can you put on speaker? Put it close to that mic here, Jerry Don. I don't know how he got their number that fast. Perfect, Don. Kind of curious now. 
Hopefully they answer because I really think they did change it. How did you call McDonald's that fast? Just Google. I don't know why they're not answering. Maybe I'll try another McDonald's. We'll see. Try another have. McDonald's. How, how, how the fuck do you have the numbers to McDonald's that fast, Don? You got different just, franchises. You just McDonald. Uh, the, it comes right up. But do you have different franchises that you call? I mean, it seems like this is a regular phone. Well, I, I got the one in my hometown. I just don't I just don't know. Uh... I Don, I, I would love you to get through to McDonald's right now. I would <laughs> you know what? You know, you know, everybody who works at McDonald's probably hates working there, so they ain't going to answer probably. I would kill to get you on the phone with McDonald's right now. Do they even have phones there? You're the one calling? I don't know. It's I mean, the, the numbers come up. I just don't know if the if they even got... But then I'm going to help you. Hey, question for you. Is this the manager? Yes. Hey, did you guys change your chicken nugget? It seemed a little bit smaller. Um, no. Are you sure about that? Yes. The 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 batter and the breading is a lot different, and the nugget is severely <laughs> smaller. Mm. There's got to be something they going on over there. No, they just saying we we haven't changed them. You ha you haven't changed them a hundred percent. A hundred percent, yeah. Oh, then I guess I got to talk to the higher ups then because this is a problem. Okay. All right. What was your name again? Zeramar. Zeramar? Yeah. All right. This is Juan Damien, Nebraska. You'll hear from me soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, may I mean, she says, she says nothing changed. Do you do you believe her? A hundred no, a hundred percent something changed. There's I would no doubt. You don't even think you just got a weird batch of nuggets. You're telling no way that this is a different nugget at chicken at chick at, at McDonald's. Yep, than we're used to. Hundred percent. The One. breader is lighting. It is a darker nugget. Do you like the change? Clearly, you don't. Not at all. You don't no. like the change, Jerry. No, no. <laughs> To me, and I, I would understand if one nugget was different, maybe something happened. It's all 10. All 10 this were different. I, I'll be honest with you, Diesel. I think I got to go to McDonald's. And you got to see. You see for yourself. You know how the the nugget, it was it was like a light batter, like that light crispy. Light batter, very crispy. Yep. To the point where the batter was so thick, though, that you could bite into the nugget and solely get batter. You got to yeah. find that chicken under. The so I actually, if they went a little bit lighter on the breading, I wouldn't mind it. What concerns me, Jerry Diesel, is if they went with smaller chicken. Because as is, the chicken nugget meal did not get it done for me without having, you know, a McChicken or something added to the meal. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, so I'm like, I'm curious now because... I don't know. I, I knew as soon as I opened the box that they were different and I just was eating them and I just, they sucked. They that's, sucked. That's, that's a shame. But the fries are always good. Do they not got good French fries? They do got good French fries. Always. Do you worry sometimes, Don, when you go to the drive through that they might oversalt them because they have old for oversalted before? I mean, they could put a gallon of salt on those fries. I wouldn't care. You got no issue with it. So you just got nah. the chicken nugget meal. You didn't add anything to it. What did we have yeah. to drink tonight, Don? I didn't have nothing. I didn't. I just. I just got a. I just got the two things. That's it. So I did didn't you ask for the the chicken nugget meal, or you asked for the no, chicken? not the meal. Large fry and then the ten piece nugget. That's it. Okay. Well, look, Jer. Here's what I need out of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward. All right. You call me anytime, Jerry Don. Yeah. Anytime. If I don't answer, I'm always going to call you back. I'll just leave you a voice message or something. Well, the voice messages are bizarre. The, the voice messages scare me sometimes, Don, because I've had voice messages from you that'll go on for 20 minutes there. I could pull up a voice message from you that's gone at least 25 minutes. As a matter of fact, I would put the over under on the voicemail call for you on an average voicemail. 12 minutes and you will just go and talk. I clip whatever you, you send me up and you'll just go. Just know, Don, you don't even have to leave voicemail. I'm good. I'm always going to call you back. I love you. Don. Uh, you could tell that to Ric Flair and Steve Irwin. <laughs> the two brothers. What? Ric Flair, Steve Irwin. They have nothing to do with one another. One guy was an animal 
enthusiast. The other guy was a WWE wrestler. Dig deeper and you'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, as bizarre as always, you just got Gerard Gill phone. Gerard, I love you. I'd go for to war for you. Juan Damien. Please don't name your son now. I'm serious, Don. If that ain't going to happen. No, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to name my son. Could you give us, before you go, Don, could you give us a couple ideas for for Jerry Don Jr., Jerry Jr.? We liked Gamble, and then like some Gamble people Gilfield. didn't like it. I loved Gamble Gilfield. I loved it. I thought it was a great name. I thought it was fantastic. That's probably not going to happen. That's a shame. I, I thought Gamble I liked Gilfield. Ricky. Ricky Gilfone? Yeah, I liked Ricky. That's slick. I like that. Yeah, slick Rick. That was cool. And then we got Junior. Junior Gilfone. Junior Jerry Gilfone. Yeah. Now we might or might not have Juan Damien. I, Don, Don, <laughs> I'm asking for the sake of your kid, okay? If you want to do Juan Damien, Juan in the first name, Damien in the, in, in the middle name. Please don't do Juan Damien Nebraska Gil phone. You're gonna throw great. Would that be though? The kid will be Don, the kid will be doomed. Don, Don, Don. I, I won't do it. I won't do it. He'll be doomed from the start. I hope Miss Jerry's listening because I'm. I don't stand for that one. That's bizarre. Yeah, it's a little wild. It's a little different. You know, kind of like the 76ers this year. Seeing the funny papers. Seeing the funny papers, Jerry Don. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jersey Jerry, as always, um, he is off his rocker this week. I don't, you know, I don't know what's gotten into him this week. There's been some bizarre phone calls, voicemails from Jerry Don, and he's just spewing shit out of left field. Jet, we got to check at some point if the Sahara Desert, if he, is there a Sahara City in Alaska that he's referring to? I don't know. I don't know. But I will tell you this. A bizarre, bizarre appearance from Jersey Jerry, who's now given himself the name of Juan Damien Nebraska Gilfone. Will he get it changed legally? Lord, I hope not. Anywho, moving on on the Brilliant Dumb Show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, call me crazy. Maybe so. But I do believe it is indeed that time. What time is that, Bob? It's the Ask Bob segment week by week. Tuesday after Tuesday, folks, I tell you to file on in to the DMs, into our voicemail. We love the voicemail here on the show. I like hearing from you folks. Uh, fire into that voicemail, 848 848- 281-7906. Have your question featured on the Ask Bob segment. I tell you folks, week in, week out, best thing we've done is bring this voicemail to the show. I have a ball with it. I think it's more personable. I like hearing from you guys. Again, call on in 848-281-7906. Starting us off, we got Dusty from Nashville, Tennessee. Dusty, what you got for us? Bobby, how you doing, man? Dusty from Nashville, Tennessee. Talk me off the ledge on this one, man. If you smoke a cigar on the golf course, hands down, it shaves five to six strokes off your game. I'm a much better golfer than my buddy. I'm a 10. He's a 15. And I shit you not, every time this motherfucker lights up a cigar, he just shoots lights out. 160 yards out, he's aiming for the hole, not even not even looking for a green. The second that cigar dies, it's back to normal. I, I just want to know your thoughts. Is the cigar the way to go? It's either that or lessons. You know, I'll tell you, Dusty. I I want to say yes, I really do, because it's so enjoyable to go out to the course, especially if you're playing good. And just light up a stogie. It feels good. Uh, it feels good in the hand. Uh, it's There's something about being on the golf course while having a stogie. And I think it depends on the person. Um, for me, as much as I do love the golf course cigar, not the case in the sense of I never have a place to put the cigar. 
You want to take it up to the tee box, but then it's your time to shoot. So you put it behind you. You got to remember that it's behind you after your swing. You got to worry about your friends stepping on the cigar. You take your tee shot. Then you go back to the cigar. The cigar may not be lit anymore. Then you got to relight it. You're not focusing on your shot. So I think the concept of having the cigar feels right. And I want to say yes, but I just don't think yes is the answer. When you're putting, same thing. You got to put the stogie to the side. You got to remember that the stogie's over there. When you go to take a shot, it's hard to have it in the mouth. You got to worry about hitting it with your shoulder. I just think it causes a lot more uh, to worry about and it makes it more complex as great as having the stogie is. Um, but me personally, I think it makes me worse because then I just don't give a shit about my golf whatsoever. I worry about whether my cigar is still lit or not, but a phenomenal question coming out of Dusty. Next question we go. Hey, Bob. Mike calling uh, from Long Island. Listen, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I got a real tough question for you, Bob, and I want your opinion on this. I myself like to pride, pride myself on uh, a good breakfast, right? I like, I liked your discussion the other day about bagels versus donuts. That's a good one. But let me, let me, let me trouble you this. What about waffles versus pancakes? Everybody likes going to an IHOP and getting a nice stack of buttermilk. But the waffle is underrated, Bob, especially at home, making an Eggo in the toaster. I mean, waffles got to come in, on top there, don't you think? Plus, the best part about it is with the pancake you put on the syrup, you put on the, on the butter, it doesn't really stay on all that well. With the waffle, you're getting a lot of texture, the, the syrup stays inside, the butter melts in. I need to know what you think, Bob. Please, please put this on the show. Anyway, love what you do. Thanks very much. I tell you, phenomenal, in-depth stuff out of Mike from Long Island, clearly a waffle guy. Um, I, I, gotta, I gotta disagree with you, Mike. I gotta disagree with you. The only thing that I will agree with is we haven't really been able to see a pancake that can withstand the pressure of the syrup without it just soaking in. Cause you always got to end up putting more syrup on top of the pancake and you got to get it before it does soak in or it just falls off. Waffle can withstand it and hold that pressure of the syrup. It can hold up to the butter. I will give the waffle that, but I think you answered my argument there when you said Making a waffle at home, you go to a frozen egg or waffle that you could get from the supermarket. That's my problem with the waffle is you can't really make a good quality homemade waffle at home. And I would say less than 5% of people out there, less than 5% of Americans have a waffle maker. It's just not something you see. You don't see a lot of homemade waffles. If you want the waffle, you usually got to go to a restaurant. It's usually at a brunchy spot or something. And what these restaurants do is they don't necessarily just give you a waffle. They got to put ice cream on top of it and all this other shit. It's kind of like they're saying, we don't think the waffle alone is that good, which is why we got to compensate putting ice cream and all this other shit on that. Yes, they do that with pancakes, but not nearly as much. You can make a homemade pancake that could be better than IHOP. You could make a homemade pancake that if you put it side and side with Denny's, you might not know the difference. Waffles are different. Waffles you can't necessarily do at home. So I, I've always been team pancake here. Um, I will always be team pancake, even though I do like waffles. But until waffles at home start becoming more normal, in households, I will stick forever and always with the pancake. Next question we go, but phenomenal stuff at a Long Island Mike.
folks, let me remind you again, 848-281-7906. I love this shit. Next up. Hey, Bob. Drew from Nebraska here again. Hey, listen, Bob. I had a quick one for you. I wanted to see if I could get a top five out of you here. Hot summer day outside. What are your top five adult beverages? You know, for me, can't go wrong with a, a summer shandy or an ice cold bush light, maybe even a margarita. But I wanted to get your take on this top five alcoholic beverages for a hot summer day outside. Bob, let's hear it. Just a phenomenal question. I, I, I mean, Nebraska coming in strong with a phenomenal top five question that I'm absolutely ready to answer. Here we come. Top five drinks or cocktails. Big Game Bob's top five. Number five in order. We're going five, one B in the top of the top, the creme de la creme on the throne. Number five. I got a Moscow mule. If it ain't copper, I don't want it. Moscow mule has got to be in that copper cup. I I want it to just freeze the shit out of my hand. Um, For me, this is a top five. I, I take my top five with me, whether it's summer, whether it's winter, whether it's fall. I I roll out with the same top five. Are there some drinks that taste better depending on the season? No question about it. My top five is my top five. And I got Moscow Mule in that five hole all day long. Just a phenomenal cocktail that'll truly take you to another planet if you let it take you there. Number four, anything tequila. I, I, I just don't understand how something can get you so drunk and then just not give you as much of a hangover the next day. People have spoken about it. I, I, I've lived it. Something about tequila. I just don't get that, that hangover the next day. Bobby's on that elliptical that next morning, just wheeling and dealing. As if I didn't just had 10 cocktails of tequila. I just don't know what it is. Just something that'll just clang you and bang you. And then wake you up ready to rock and roll. And, and I really think tequila needs to be acknowledged uh, for that. Number three, mango cart. Anytime you can get your hands on a mango cart beer, do it. Just a sensational beer that goes down like no other. Some say it's a summer drink. I say, fuck that. I'll drink that shit in Lambeau Field in wintertime. I'll watch a Packers-Bears game while zipping down mango carts. Love the mango cart. Love it. If I see it, I'm banging the mango cart all day long. I got mango cart in the three hole. Number two, golf's greatest liquid. That is the transfusion. To me, the transfusion has really become the drink of golf. And I mean it, and and I want to give a shout out to the Four Play Pod, the Four Play Pod boys, because they have put the transfusion on the map. Um, I know people were aware of it before the Four Play Pod boys. I was not. The Barstool Sports Four Play Pod group, to me, brought the transfusion, put them on the map. I love a transfusion. I love five of them on the golf course, two of them, seven of them. I'll drink a transfusion out to dinner. That's the only thing that I will say about the transfusion. It, it's such a golf course strength that not many people make it outside of it. I would love to see the transfusion transition to where you can order it at a bar on a Friday night out with your friends. No problem. Odds are you go out on a Friday night to a club. They're not going to be able to make you a transfusion. We got to get grape juice out there. We got to get grape juice back on the market stronger than it's ever been and keep those transfusions flowing ladies and gentlemen number one i'll stay with it all day long it's my go-to it ain't even a question everybody likes it after the meal as a dessert drink i'll take it before let an espresso martini fire me on up let an espresso martini just take me to pluto just a one-way ticket to pluto and paradise. The espresso martini to me is a drink like no other. Uh, And I know people like to drink it after the meal. I'm telling you, give the espresso martini a try before the meal. 
it'll be the best version of you you could possibly be. I sit down with the boys. I go out on a date. I have one of those bad boys before my meal. I'm nonstop chatter, just bringing a lot to the table, work in the room more so than I normally would, and just pinballing across the dance floor. If you go to a wedding, try get an espresso martini. Before dinner, get an espresso martini. Get one after. These things just hit phenomenally. And, and I will say there are so – the espresso martini more than other drinks – it, it wavers to where you can get a very bad espresso martini as well as getting a very good one. It all depends on who makes it. If you find the guy that makes it right, stick very close to him, invite him to Thanksgiving, invite him to Christmas because that cocktail, ladies and gentlemen, can do damage. Folks, that wraps up yet another edition here of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. We appreciate you for the support. We love you for the support. If you want to go the extra mile on the show, if you want more content, if you want bagel reviews, Caesar reviews, weekly happy hours, and extra podcasts on Friday, sign up to our Patreon. The link's in my bio, both on Instagram and TikTok. We have an absolute ball over there. Trust the big fella right there. I'll keep firing extra content your way. Folks, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. You all take care now.